You are worthy, Lord. We declare with our voices, we believe it in our hearts that you are worthy. You're the name above all names. And at your name, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that you are Lord. That you are Lord over all. That you're in control over all. You are faithful over all creation. Help us to trust that, God. Help us to believe in you. It's in the mighty name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Thank you, guys. So very good. Very good. Just for you to remember, every Sunday out there in the foyer, we have farm fresh eggs and $5 a dozen. Inflation is going on. No. But that's, a, that's not a bad deal for farm fresh eggs. They're nice and big. They're, they're very tasty. And all the profits go to benefit our local mission work that we do. $5 a dozen, $10 for two dozen, and $30 for three dozen. It is a bargain. <laughs> Please, at the back of the church, get those eggs before you leave. I think there's only about four 12s back there now, so get in line. Come one, come all. John chapter 5. John chapter 5, what Jesus had to say about working on Sunday. John chapter 5 what Jesus had to say about working on Sunday. It's good for us to, first of all, know where the Lord is at work. It's good for us to be able to recognize the stuff that only Jesus can do. And it's important that we are keyed in so that we can see where the Lord's at work, so we can participate and we can experience what God is up to around us and in our world. John chapter 5. After this, there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there is in Jerusalem by the sheep gate a pool in Aramaic called Bethesda, which has five roofed colonnades. In these lay a multitude of invalids, blind, lame, and paralyzed. One man was there who had been an invalid for 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there and knew that he had already been there a long time, he said to him, do you want to be healed? The sick man answered, sir, I have no one to put me into the pool. And when the water is stirred, the King James lets you know the angels would come and stir the water up. And he said, there's no one to get me in that water. And while I'm going, another steps down before me. I'm being passed over. It's been fair to me, in other words. Jesus said to him, get up, take your mat, take your bed and walk. And at once, the man was healed. 38 years, laying on a mat, wanting to be healed, wanting someone to put him in the water so when the angel stirred up the water, he could be healed. But just with the spoken word of Jesus, get up, take up your bed, and walk. At once, the man was healed. At once, he was healed. Think about that for a moment. Didn't expect to see Jesus that day. Didn't expect to have that day would be the day of healing for him. I'm sure it was like in every other day, he probably thought, I sure hope I get some food today. I sure hope I get a few coins today. I sure hope that, that uh, people are at least kind to me at the pool. But, you know, take whatever comes. And he's there, and he has this encounter with Jesus, and he walks for the first time in 38 years. It's amazing what happens when Jesus comes along, isn't it? Now that was the Sabbath. That was between evening on Friday and evening on Saturday. Now that day was the Sabbath. Keep that in mind. So the Jews said to the man who had been healed, It is the Sabbath, and it is not lawful for you to take up your bed. You can't do that on the Sabbath. But he answered them, The man who healed me, that man said to me, Take up your bed and walk. They asked him, who is the man that said that to you? Take up your bed and walk. Now, the man who had been healed did not know who it was. For Jesus had withdrawn as there was a crowd in the place. Afterward, Jesus found him in the temple and said to him, See, you are well. Sin no more that nothing worse may ever happen to you. The man went away and told the Jews that it was Jesus who had healed him. 
Look at verse 16. And this is why the Jews were persecuting Jesus. You can't have anyone being healed on a Sunday. You just can't have it. It is not right. It is not how we believe. It is not our experience. It is not the right thing to do. You just can't have people being healed on a Sunday, on the Lord's Day. Now, we're not the Sabbath people. We're the people that believe that because of the resurrection of Christ, we celebrate the resurrection on Sunday. But the Sabbath was like our Sunday, and they believe that you ought not to work between Friday evening and Saturday evening. And they considered... This guy who had been, been an invalid for 38 years, that picking up his mat and walking was work. And you sure can't have Jesus doing that and stirring up church. You just can't have Jesus stirring up a problem in church. You can't have that. You can't have a church where people get carried away. You can't have a church where people really believe. You can't have a church where people are really experiencing the Lord. You just can't have church like that. It's not healthy for anyone. It's not healthy to have a daily faith. It's not healthy to believe in God. It's not healthy to even believe in healing. Do you know that? It's not healthy for us to believe in healing. It's not healthy for us to believe that God is supernatural and He can do what no one of us can do. It's just not healthy for us. And that's where they are in verse 16. This is why the Jews were persecuting Jesus because He was doing these things on the Sabbath. Now, wouldn't it be nice if we had, oh, remember this guy, 38 years we've seen this guy. I've been coming to this pool for 10 years at least, and every, I see this guy all the time. Look at him. Did, I couldn't, man, his legs are working. He's up walking around. But oh, no, they only found fault. You can't help people on a Sunday. This can't be of God because it's not the way we do things. You ever heard that? You can't do it that way. Rules are for everyone's benefit, and if you start breaking rules, like helping someone, healing someone on a Sunday, well, we're, we're going to have all kinds of craziness going on, and we can't have a whole bunch of craziness going on. The miracle was not okayed by the rulers, by the council. God only works according to our understanding. Think about that for a moment. God doesn't do it that way, Lee. How come? Because He'd never done that way before with us, and we don't understand. That can't be of the Lord. Why can't it be of the Lord? Because we're Americans. We're English speakers. We don't see that. We don't have that. That's not the way it works with us. I'm happy that the man was helped, but I'm not happy with how it happened. Man, we just can't function with a God that is unlimited. We like for God to be in a box where we understand. We like for God to be like we can explain Him. And when you start having things happen that we can't explain well, we get nervous, we get uneasy, and, and we just can't have that happen. You can't have that spiritual stuff going on. We, we like singing and being bored to death and going home and eating fried chicken. Don't change that for us. Jesus healed the guy on a Sunday. You bored with church? Any of y'all bored? You can be honest. Are you bored with church? Are you bored with your Christian life? Are you bored with me? No. My dad told me right before he passed away, two or three months before, he said, how long have you been up there, boy? And I told him, he said, they've got to be tired of you. Why don't you move? Why don't you go somewhere else? All right, Dad. That, that won't work out well for you. Don't, don't speak up unless you really know what you're doing. Verse 17, his answer. Our Lord is always at work. 
That's what Jesus said to that. That's what Jesus said to their statement of bored. That's what Jesus said to their statement of not understanding. That's what they said to Jesus working on a Sabbath and healing a guy. He said to him, my father is working until now and I am working. That's what Jesus said. He said, I'm always working. It's encouraging to know the Lord's at work. It's also discouraging when we lose sight that the Lord is always at work. If you live this week, two or three days, and you have it in mind that the Lord is always at work, those were good days. If you had two or three days this week and you didn't see the Lord at work, or you weren't reminded of it, or it wasn't on your forefront, you know, it wasn't up here in your front lo lobe where you can recall it easily, it wasn't as good. It's really exciting. It's, it's, it's an the anticipation that the Lord is always on work. And it's just a good thing to keep in mind that the Lord is always at work. Now, we do live in a place that is difficult to see the clear activities of the Lord. Do you know that? We are surrounded by the three hardest to reach groups in the world. You know what they are? It's the wealthy, it's the wise, and the moral. And as I was reminded today, we're also in the Bible Belt. So you put the Bible Belt in place of that. You think about the three hardest people groups to reach in all the world. We are absolutely surrounded by them. Wealthy, wise, and moral. Good people. We are surrounded by good, truck, suburban, driving people. Right? Good people. Fun to be around. Educated. Likes to live. Likes experiences likes to do things, those kind of things. And, and the scripture clearly says three hardest people groups to reach, wealthy, wise, and the educated or the moral. And so here we are. And so since that's the case, it's really important. It's really healthy for us. It's really an, a, a matter of importance that we keep in mind that the Lord is always at work. And if we don't keep in mind that the Lord is always at work, then we're going to struggle with boredom. We're going to struggle with it. There are places in the world where you can go, you don't ever struggle with the boredom of the Lord's activity because it's all over the place. It's visible. You can see it. You can hear it. You can feel it. But when wealthy, wise, and moral, it's hard to see. Because as, as you know as I do, that most of the people that we know, one of the reasons why spiritual things are not important to them is they see no need for it. And so it's hard for us to see the activity of the Lord. And so we might be like these religious people that like for God to be in a box and like for God to be the way they understand and like for God to be understood, easy to explain. We persecute Jesus because we're not good with him doing these things on the Sabbath. And so instead of experiencing the things that the Lord is only capable of doing, we drift into religion things that we understand. And so it's important that you keep in mind that Jesus said in red words, my father is working until now, and I too am working. It'll help you. It'll benefit you. It, it, it will, it'll help the, your spirit. It'll help your mind transform to where the Lord wants it to be. So that's a good thing. So every single day, think about it. The Lord works on Sundays. The Lord is always at work. In verse 18, it says, this, this was why the Jews were seeking all the more to kill him, because not only was he breaking the Sabbath, but he was even calling God his own father, making himself equal with God, and we can't have that. And so there, Jesus is stirring up an issue here. So let's see what he says about it. So Jesus said to them, he knew their heart, knew their mind, he knew what they were thinking. He says, truly I say to you, the Son of Man, the Son can do nothing of His own accord. Right? He's under authority. Jesus, the Son of God, the Messiah, is under authority. Truly, 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 I say to you, truly, truly means I ain't lying. You need to listen to me here. I'm speaking truth to you. You can count on this. I do nothing of good on my own. I do nothing on my own accord, but only what he sees the Father doing. So Jesus was under the authority of God the Father, and Jesus did not act, he did not work from his own accord, 
But he looked to see where his father was at work, and he got he joined him in that. For whatever the father did, that's what Jesus did. Now that helps us to keep, you know to focus in on the things that only God can do. It says in verse 20, For the Father loves the Son and shows Him all that He Himself is doing. The Father loves the Son and lets Him in on it. Fathers, when you love your sons, you let Him in on it. Fathers, when you love your daughters, you let Him in on it. Fathers, when you see a beautiful sunrise, what do you do? You say, y'all come out and look at the sunrise. When you see a beautiful sunset, this is the masterpiece of God. This is Him painting a picture in the western sky. They say, come look at how wonderful God is. Look what He's painted for us tonight. We do that. When we see the things only God can do, which a sunset and a sunrise are two things only God can do, we, we, we ask our loved ones to come participate. And so when Jesus sees the Father doing something, he joins in. So, it's important that we realize that the Lord is always at work, and it's important that we learn to look for the stuff that only the Father does. That we look for the stuff that only the Father can do. Look over in Romans chapter 3. This is a wonderful place, wonderful passage, and it's very simple, very practical, and I think it'll help us recognize the things that only the Lord can do. It will help us identify them, recognize them, rejoice over them, and to get involved with them. Romans 3, verse 9. What then? Are we Jews any better off? No, not at all, for we have already charged that all, both Jews and Greeks, are all under sin. As it is written. So, verse 9 tells us that Jews are just like Gentiles, all under sin. No better off. So we begin by recognizing the things only God can do as they pertain to we're all under sin. We're all struggle with the burden of sin. And so under sin, this is the way people are. None is righteous, no, not one. No one understands. No one seeks for God. All have turned aside. Together they have become worthless. No one does good, not even one. Their throat is an open grave. They use their tongues to deceive. The venom of asp is under their lips. Their mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood. In their paths are ruin and misery. And the way of peace they have not known. There is no fear of God before their eyes. So, when you recognize that the Scripture tells us that this is the way people are under sin, you can take these Scriptures, understand what it says, and you can apply them like this. If this is the way it is for people to be under sin, then there must be an opposite for us to clue in on when people are no longer under sin or if they're in the process of being relieved from being under sin. And so you can make this application and if you will make these connections, if you'll connect the dots, it'll help you see that's the work of the Lord. That can only be the work of the Lord. There's no other way that can happen than God does that. Let me give you an example. Where there is righteousness... The Lord is at work. If anybody at work, anybody at school is really wanting to live right, live to please the Lord, live to, to, to make a difference in this world, that's the work of the Lord. And so if you hear anyone say, I really want to make a difference here at work, praise the Lord Jesus, the Holy Spirit is at work here. He is? Yes, He's it. He's at work in you. You didn't get that thought on your own. That's not a, that's not a, a sinful thought that anybody has. And if you have that thought, rejoice in that thought. The Lord is at work. And, and just so get, go on and get alongside that person and stand beside them and just be a blessing to them and help them do what God's calling them to do. If you have a thought like that, it's not from you because you don't understand. If you have a thought that you, you want to visit people, it's not from you. If you have this thought that you wish things weren't that way because the Lord is, we sang a while ago, and since the Lord is a certain way, 
then, then when we hear that people are wanting to live for Jesus, it's, it can't be from them. It's from the Holy Spirit. And so you know for sure this is something only God the Father can do, and so the Lord is at work. Where there is spiritual understanding, the Lord is at work. If, if someone in your life understands to a certain degree, John 3, 16, that's of the Lord. If they understand Romans 5, 8, but while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us, that God showed us how much he loved us in that. That's of the Lord. That's spiritual understanding. If someone says to you, hey, thinking about praying a little bit, that's of the Lord. That's of the Holy Spirit. Where people seek for God, the Lord is at work. Because the scripture here says no one understands, no one seeks for God. So today, we, we've got a group of people here, a group of brothers and sisters here. This is a clear, visible sign that the Lord is at work. Why else would you be here? You're not here for me, I'm boring. You're not here for the church, you're bored with the work of the church, right? 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 Been doing this a long time. They're tired of, you know, there's got to be something new and exciting for us to get plugged in on. No, 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 no. Look what we have here. No one seeks for God. And so if you've got people seeking to know God, seeking to understand God, seeking to listen to Him, that's from the Lord. Rejoice in that. Celebrate in that. Where people do good, the Lord is at work. Where wholesome words are spoken, the Lord is at work. Do you know that? Someone says, you know, I need to clean up the way I talk. I need to clean up the way I think. I need to think more positive. I need to think more about spiritual matters. I need to be clued in a little more. That's of the Lord. You know, I, 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 I see all the, the, the corruption and I see all the things going on in our land and I think about the desperation, I think about the hurt that's here and I just long to do something like that. That's from Jesus. The Lord's at work. Celebrate it. Join in. Participate in that. See it as an invitation for you to join in on what the Lord is doing. Because under sin that doesn't happen and so the lord must be at work someone at work says to you you go to church don't you you say yeah i go to church what's that like green light the lord's at work well that can't be that can't be the lord's work all they said was i go to church and of course they know i go to church because i told them we went to church yesterday and left bored <laughs> they said do you go to church yeah i go to church you mean to tell me that you work all week long and that you go to ball games all day on Saturday and you just got a little time on Sunday for yourself and you go to church? He said, yeah, why is that? Because of the Lord. I'm seeking the Lord. I want to know Him. I want to experience Him. I, I want to celebrate Him. I want to hear what He's got to say. That's the work of the Lord. Under sin, we don't do that. Where there is peace, the Lord is at work. And where there is fear of God, the Lord is at work. Never take it for granted if someone is fearful of God's justice, of God's judgment. That's of the Lord. It's a value. It's a virtue. It's an important spiritual understanding. So since we've got all that, and we looked at Romans chapter 3, and we've said these are the things that happen when people are under sin, and we've talked about these are the things that can only happen when the Holy Spirit is involved and the Lord is at work. Can you recognize now where the Lord is at work near you? Is that, does that ring any bells for you? Have you heard something? That's Junior at work. That's Cynthia at school, that's Gloria, that's, that's so-and-so, that's Uncle Bud in his life. He's going through that now. So the Holy Spirit must be at work there. So what did Jesus say he did? The Lord is always at work. He says, I do nothing on my own accord. I look to see what my Father's doing, and I just go do that. So if you hear that Uncle Bud is concerned about spiritual things, go over there and see what the Lord is doing. Uncle Bud, you've been asking, you've been having questions about Jesus? Yes, yeah, son, I have. Well, what kind of questions are you having? Well, I just don't know. I thought about heaven. I thought about eternity. I thought about, you know, my life counting for something. I thought about no regrets. All those things is the Lord 
at work. All of them. So join in. The Lord's at work somewhere around you. There's someone in your neighborhood. The Lord is at work. The Lord is at work in people's families. The Lord is at work at work, at school, at reunions of all kinds of places. The Lord's at work. So listen, watch, connect the dots, and celebrate. The Lord is always at work. It'll cure boredom. It'll cure being bored with church. It'll, be, it'll cure being bored with your own Christianity. And that's really important in it. You know, I have seen that many of us need to be sparked from time to time. We need an event. We need a reminder. Sometimes it's a negative reminder that we need to live for the Lord. Sometimes it's a positive reminder that we need to live for the Lord. Life changes. Having children are great spiritual opportunities. Having children go off to, to college are great spiritual opportunities. It's also a beautiful thing to get them out of the house. <laughs> right? Life changes. Divorce. I hate to say it. It's a great spiritual activity for many. Any kind of brokenness. Great spiritual opportunity. Not quite sure what to do. Great spiritual opportunity. Turning 50 and having regrets. Great spiritual opportunity. Being bored with life. Great spiritual opportunity. The Lord's at work. Dis discover where He's at work and celebrate it and see what the Lord does. Now, the last thing here I want to speak to you about is this. When we see the Lord's work, it's just an, an opportunity to get involved. Just think about all the wonderful activities the Lord's doing around us. Where is the Lord at work in your life? Take inventory. Think about it. Ask the Lord. Show me, Lord. I want to know. I recognize that the Word clearly says that you do nothing on your own but what you see the Father do. Oh, Lord, I want to see what you do. And I want to celebrate it. It'll help us get off the roller coaster and, and go from one spiritual event to another. It'll help us to, to learn to, to grow in Jesus during the hard times. It allow us to be faithful even when we just, our tank is dry. Because every day we wake up and say, the Lord is at work. I'm going to recognize where he is at work today and I'm going to join him. So, what does Jesus have to say about working on Sunday? The Father is always at work, and I too am working. The Father does nothing. I do nothing on my own accord. I simply do what I see the Father doing. And I get involved with that. Thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you, Lord, for your word. Thank you, Lord, for the testimony of the songs today, for uh, the drawing of your spirit. In, in different people's lives today. Lord, I, I just want to lift up your, your people that are struggling, that perhaps are bored, or perhaps are stuck, they're in a rut. I just pray, Lord, that they will understand that you are always at work. And Lord, if we just connect those dots, we will get to shout, hallelujah, praise the Lord. And we'll get to see the things that only you can do. In Jesus' name, amen.